Richard Morgan is a 93-year-old Irishman who's a four-time world champion in indoor rowing. He's got the lung function of a 40-year-old and he rows 30 kilometers per week. Richard's completely the opposite of what you would expect a 19-year-old to look and function like. You might think that it's genetics, but that's not really the case. Richard wasn't an athlete his entire life. He actually started exercising only in his 70s. And what age were you then? Uh, 73. In this video, I'm going to go through a study the researchers did on Richard and talk about his training routine and diet. So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. The study was published recently in the Journal of Applied Physiology and Richard was 92 years old at the time. They measured his cardiorespiratory fitness, heart rate, muscle mass and dietary intake. The most remarkable thing they found in my opinion is that Richard's maximum heart rate was 153 beats per minute, whereas for someone his age it would normally be only 128. So he had the maximum heart rate of someone in their 60s and his VO2 max was 23.4 which would put him in the top 90th percentile of people in their 80s and the 60th percentile of someone in their 70s. However his vital capacity was 3.36 liters which is the same as someone in their late 30s and early 40s. Vital capacity describes the volume of air that the lungs are able to exchange and this goes down with age. Although the study didn't measure Richard's blood markers like hemoglobin A1c or inflammation, his uh, fitness markers were still excellent. A higher VO2 max is one of the best predictors of longevity and reduced mortality. Having a VO2 max above 50 milliliters per kilogram per minute is linked to a four times lower risk of mortality compared to a VO2 max below 16. Now, Richard's VO2 max was 23, which is, you know, low compared to someone in the 30s or 40s, but compared to someone in their 90s, then it's very high. A VO2 max of 16 is considered the disability line, below which you're not able to walk around and take care of yourself. And Richard is still well above that line in his 90s. VO2 max and cardiorespiratory fitness declined by about 6 to 15 percent per decade. In a 22 year longitudinal study on elite runners, those who stopped running completely saw a 15 percent decrease in their VO2 max per decade. Those who were engaged in only fitness running, like running on the weekends for general health, saw a 15 percent reduction in their VO2 max per decade. However, those who kept running regularly experienced only a 6 percent drop per decade 22 years after the fact. That's quite astonishing. Those who kept exercising and those who kept running pretty much cut their VO2 max decline in half. It also goes to show that if you stop exercising, you pretty much fall off the cliff in terms of your fitness and functional capacity. So what does Richard's training look like? On average, he rows 30 kilometers per week, which totals to about 40 minutes per day. 70% of that time is spent in low intensity, what's called zone 2. 20% in moderate intensity and only 10% at near maximum intensity. In addition to that, he lifts weights twice a week, close to failure. He does three sets of dumbbell lunges, rows and curls. That's a pretty minimalist lifting program and it makes sense for him because he specializes in indoor rowing. However, from a longevity perspective, you obviously want to do resistance training. I have made some videos comparing the reduction in all-cause mortality between resistance training and cardio, and most of the evidence suggests that a higher VO2 max gives greater longevity benefits than higher muscle strength and muscle mass. But the combination of both is better than one or the other alone. Richard is pretty lightweight. He weighs only 59 kilograms or 130 pounds, but that's to be expected for someone in their 90s. He had a lean muscle mass of 47.7 kilograms, which made up 80.6% of his total body weight, which is excellent for his age. His fat mass was 9.1 kilograms, which made his body fat percentage 15.4%. Being too low body weight for someone in their 90s could be dangerous, and it is associated with higher risk of mortality. However, that's usually because people with lower body weight are also the ones who have less muscle and lower bone density, which increases the risk of frailty. In Richard's case, it's not a problem because he has a lot of muscle, you know, relatively speaking, to his age. What about his diet? There were no specifics about the exact foods that Richard eats, but they did measure his total calorie intake and protein intake. His diet is high protein, 2.3 grams per kilogram per day of lean body mass, which for his 47.7 kilogram of lean mass would equate to 110 grams of protein per day. The 2.3 gram per kilogram is the equivalent of 1 gram per pound of lean body mass. Research has found that the maximum ceiling for muscle growth is somewhere between 0.8 gram per pound or 1.6 gram per kilogram of lean muscle of protein per day. Richard eats more than that 0.8 grams per kilogram, 
But that's actually a good thing because the elderly people, they need more protein. When you get older, your body isn't able to maintain and build muscle that easily, which is why a higher protein than is recommended is generally better for the elderly people. Keep in mind that this number refers to the lean body mass, not total body mass. Richard's total calorie intake was 33.4 plus and minus 1.7 kilocalories per kilogram of lean mass, which is 1,600 calories per day. You would imagine that's quite low for someone who rows 40 minutes every day. But it's not low for someone who weighs only 59 kilograms. The lower your body weight and the less muscle mass you have, the lower your metabolic rate is also going to be. Of course, Richard's muscle mass is relatively speaking high in terms of the total percentage of his body weight. But objectively speaking, having 47.7 kilograms of lean mass and only weighing 59 kilograms total is not a lot of weight, which is why his metabolic rate is also lower. Overall, the biggest takeaway for this is that it's never too late to start. And you should always keep going no matter your age. If you stop using the things that keep you young or if you stop using your muscles, then they're inevitably going to deteriorate. All right, I hope you got some valuable information from this video. If you want to get the comprehensive 360 health assessment with dozens of different tests, hundreds of biomarkers, the body composition scan, the VO2 max test, full body MRI, you name it, and all of that in a five-star hotel, then I invite you to join me at my retreat at a longevity clinic in India. It's an all-inclusive retreat, so it covers all the tests and medical exams, seven-day accommodation at the five-star hotel, and three meals a day. If you're interested, then email me the word India to info at and I'll send you the details. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like and subscribe. Notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.